स्कॉलरशिप म्हणा स्पॉन्सरशिप म्हणा किंवा फेलोशिप म्हणा तर ती पाच मुलांसाठी आम्ही या वर्षीपासून सुरू करणार आहोत आणि ह्या मुलांनी नंतर महाराष्ट्राच्या जडणघडणीत कॉन्ट्रीब्युशन करावा ही आमची अपेक्षा आहे खूप एक नवीन उपक्रम आम्ही सुरू करतोय आणि त्याची सगळी माहिती तुम्हाला ऑनलाईनवर मिळेलच आणि त्यांना मेंटेनिंग करण्यासाठी काकोडकर साहेब सावंत साहेब माशेलकर साहेब यांचं सगळ्यांचं मार्गदर्शन संस्थेलाच असतं ते सगळे संस्थेला जी मदत करतात त्याबद्दल त्यांच्या सगळ्यांचे मी मनपूर्वक आभार मानते आणि चव्हाण साहेबांच्या नावाने ही जी आज संस्था आहे त्या संस्थेमध्ये सातत्य ठेवून महाराष्ट्रात आणि देशामध्ये काहीतरी नवीन करण्याचा प्रयत्न या सगळ्या टीमकडून होतो आज आपण इथे सगळे आलात मी तुमचं मनापासून स्वागत करते आणि जर का या कार्यक्रमानंतर आपल्याला काही सूचना करायच्या असतील तर त्या सूचना आपण जरूर आम्हाला फीडबॅकच्या माध्यमातून द्या आणि आमची जी वेबसाईट आहे ज्याचं उद्घाटन होणार आहे ती जरूर व्हिजिट करा आम्हाला जेवढं सुचलं तेवढं आम्ही त्याच्यात टाकलंय पण तुम्हाला त्याच्यात काही सुधारणा करण्यासाठी जर काही सूचना करायच्या असतील तर दे आर मोस्ट वेलकम कारण का ही वास्तू ही माझी तुमची नाही आहे ही आपली आहे ही या महाराष्ट्राची आहे आणि प्रत्येक मराठी माणसाला मुंबईला आल्यावर चव्हाण सेंटरमध्ये यावं असं वाटलंच पाहिजे लायब्ररीमध्ये जावं असं वाटलं पाहिजे आपल्याकडे खूप चांगलं काम रिसर्चचं लायब्ररीमध्येही चाललेलं आहे त्यामुळे या सगळ्या ज्या सुविधा आहेत त्या तुमच्या सगळ्यांसाठी आहेत त्याचा उपयोग आपल्या अभ्यासासाठी आपण जरूर करावा आज इथे एवढे मोठे लोक आहेत म्हणजे आज मला आल्याला असं वाटलं की अरे बापरे आज काकोडकर साहेब पण इथेच आहेत आज माशेलकर साहेब पण इथेच आहेत नरेंद्रजी पण आज इथे आहेत विवेक सावंत शेत म्हणजे आजचा सगळा महाराष्ट्रातला मला वाटतं द बेस्ट ऑफ द बेस्ट आज इथे या म्हणजे किती प्लॅनिंग केलं असतं तर मला नाही वाटत चौघांची एका दिवशी वेळ आली असते पण त्याच्यामुळे आज चौघही तुम्ही आवर्जून या कार्यक्रमासाठी उपस्थित राहिला याबद्दल मी तुमच्या सगळ्यांचे मनपूर्वक आभार मानते आपल्या सगळ्यांचं मनापासून स्वागत करून आपली रजा घेते जय हिंद जय महाराष्ट्र संस्थेचे उपाध्यक्ष माननीय श्री अरुण गुजराती साहेब यांना मी विनंती करतो की त्यांनी आपलं मनोगत व्यक्त करावं खरं म्हणजे तुम्हाला आधी बोलायला सांगायचं होतं पण मी माझी चूक होती तर तुम्ही बोललात तर परत प्लीज श्रद्धेय साहेब मंचावरील सर्व सन्माननीय आजचे प्रमुख पाहुणे डॉक्टर स्वामीनाथन बंधू भगिनी मी त्यांच्याशी आता बोलत होतो सोमायजीशी की तुमचे वडील शेतीसाठी आणि तुम्ही आरोग्यासाठी डॉक्टर स्वामीनाथन फॉर ऍग्रिकल्चर अँड सोमायज यू आर फॉर हेल्थ केअर यू कंबाईन हेल्थ केअर यू कंबाईन दिस हेल्थ केअर विथ ह्युमॅनिटी विथ मन काईंड वी हॅव हर्ड यू ऑन फोर फोर नाव द स्कोप ऑफ युअर सब्जेक्ट इज व्हेरी वाईट हवेवर द वे यू हॅव गिवन अस द इन्फॉर्मेशन यू आर सो सिम्पल अ चीफ सायंटिस्ट ऑफ वर्ल्ड हेल्थ ऑर्गनायझेशन सो सिम्पल दे इट इज सिम्पल टू बी हॅपी बट डिफिकल्ट टू बी सिम्पल सम सम पीपल फाईन डिफिकल्टी इन अपॉर्च्युनिटी सम फाईन अपॉर्च्युनिटी इन डिफिकल्टी यू हॅव रिसीव्ह गोल्डन मेडल्स इन ऑल दॅट नंबर ऑफ इफ आय विल टेक टेन मिनिट्स वॉट एव्हर यू हॅव रिसीव ऑल दिज प्रेझेंटेशन ऑफ दॅट आय डू नॉट टेक मच मोर टाईम बट ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ दिस ऑर्गनायझेशन आय रेप्युटेशन सेकंड टू नन आय गुड विल सेकंड टू नन अंडर द लिडरशिप ऑफ डायनामिक लिडरशिप ऑफ शरद पवारजी दिशिक्युशन इज डुईंग वेल अँड द स्कोप ऑफ द वर्क द डायमेन्शन इन ऑल दॅट द मोमेंट सुप्रियाजी हॅज अ taken up the uh, this uh, responsibility the work is going on going on going on and a day will come the uh, this uh, chavan center will be the best organization in the world thank you so much dhanyawad swarge yashwantrao chavan vicharan madli suspashtata ani sarvapratham deshaikacha vichar ya goshti jancha kadun shikta yetat संसदेतील शिष्टाचार आणि मर्यादांचं पालन करण्यासंदर्भातील ज्ञान ज्यांच्याकडून लाभतं आपल्या आचरणात संयम बाळगण्याची शिकवण ज्यांच्याकडून घेता येते 
त्या अवघ्या महाराष्ट्राला विकासाची दिशा दाखवणारे स्वर्गीय यशवंतराव चव्हाण साहेबांचं लिखाण आणि त्यांचा जीवनपट उलगडणाऱ्या डब्ल्यू 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 डॉट यशवंतराव चव्हाण डॉट इन या नवीन संकेतस्थळाचं लोकार्पण करण्यासाठी साहेबांना गुरुस्थानी मानणाऱ्या आणि आजच्या राजकारणातील आधारवड माननीय श्री शरदराव पवार साहेब अध्यक्ष यशवंतराव चव्हाण सेंटर यांना मी विनंती करतो की त्यांनी या वेबसाईटचं उद्घाटन करावं भेट द्या चव्हाण साहेबांची जवळपास एक लाख सत्तर हजारहून अधिक कागदपत्र जी चव्हाण साहेबांच्या विरामुळा इथल्या निवासस्थानी आहेत ती मॅक्सिमम सगळी कागदपत्र डिजिटाईज स्वरूपामध्ये ठेवून या वेबसाईटवरती आपण ठेवण्याचा प्रयत्न केलाय याच्यामध्ये याही व्यतिरिक्त तुम्हाला जर काही सूचना असतील त्याही तुम्ही सांगा त्या पण आपण याच्यामध्ये ऍड करणार आहोत जसं मला ताईंनी सांगितलं चव्हाण साहेबांवरती असलेली सगळी मराठी हिंदी इंग्रजी सगळी पुस्तकं याच्यावरती आहेत साहेबांची विधिमंडळातली हो सगळी मोफत आहेत पीडीएफ स्वरूपात आहेत तुम्हाला कधीही डाऊनलोड करता येतील डाउनलोड करून तुम्हाला ती वाचता येतील ऑडिओ स्वरूपात ऐकता येतील काही पुस्तकं तुम्हाला त्याचबरोबर साहेबांच्या ज्या जुन्या मुलाखती घेतलेल्या आहेत ज्या लेखी स्वरूपामध्ये आल्या होत्या त्या लेखी स्वरूपातल्या मुलाखती देखील या वेबसाईटवरती आपण उपलब्ध करून दिल्या आहेत त्याच्यानंतर साहेबांबद्दलची व्याख्यानमाला या सगळ्या वेगवेगळ्या व्याख्यानमाला त्र्याहत्तर ते एकोणीस पंच्याण्णव शहाण्णव पर्यंत ज्या सगळ्या व्याख्यानमाला याच्यावरती आहेत त्याचबरोबर लोकराज्याला एकोणीसशे बावन्न ते जवळपास पासष्ट पर्यंत जे काही वेगवेगळे लोकराज्याच्या मासिकांमधून लेख आले ते सगळे किंवा चव्हाण साहेबांनी घेतलेले सगळे निर्णय हे सगळे निर्णय सुद्धा या वेबसाईटवरती आहेत त्यामुळं प्रत्येकाला ज्याला अभ्यास करायचा आहे चव्हाण साहेबांबद्दल चव्हाण साहेबांबद्दल पूर्ण जाणून घ्यायचं आहे त्याला प्रत्येक माहिती या वेबसाईटवरती मिळेल अशा पद्धतीने या वेबसाईटची रचना करण्याचा प्रयत्न केलाय ही पूर्ण वेबसाईट आपलं यशवंतराव चव्हाण राष्ट्रीय ग्रंथालय जे आपलं चव्हाण सेंटरच्या अंडर चालतं त्यांच्या मार्फत आपण पूर्ण हा डेटा हा मेंटेन केला जातो त्यांनी हे सगळं बनवलंय त्यांच्या थ्रू आपण हे सगळं करतोय याच्या व्यतिरिक्त तुम्हाला काही माहिती लागली तरी तुम्ही राष्ट्रीय ग्रंथालयाला जरी अप्रोच झाला तरी सर्व माहिती तुम्हाला राष्ट्रीय ग्रंथालयातून मिळेल दुर्मिळातली दुर्मिळ कागदपत्र हे वेबसाईटवरती आहेत त्यामुळे तुम्हाला काहीही लागलं चव्हाण साहेबांबद्दल काही जाणून घ्यायचं आहे प्रत्येक गोष्ट इथं आणि आपल्या ग्रंथालयात आहे प्रत्येकाने डब्ल्यू डब्ल्यू डॉट यशवंतराव चव्हाण डॉट इन वेबसाईटला भेट द्या आणि जेवढं जास्तीत जास्त लोकांपर्यंत नव्या पिढीपर्यंत ही वेबसाईट आपल्याला पोहोचवता येईल त्यासाठी तुम्ही सर्वांनी सातबारा लावा ही विनंती थँक्यू धन्यवाद पुढच्या कार्यक्रमाला सुरुवात करण्यापूर्वी माननीय हेमंत टाकले साहेबांना विनंती करतो की त्यांनी माननीय माशेलकर साहेब इकडे उपस्थित आहेत त्यांचंही ग्रंथ भेट देऊन स्वागत करावं आणि आता यशवंतराव चव्हाण राष्ट्रीय पुरस्कार दोन हजार तेवीस या यशवंतराव चव्हाण साहेबांच्या स्मृतीप्रित्यर्थ देण्यात येणाऱ्या पुरस्काराविषयी माहिती देण्यास मी आमंत्रित करतो अणुवैज्ञानिक आणि राष्ट्रीय पुरस्कार समितीचे अध्यक्ष डॉक्टर अनिल काकोडकर यांना आदरणीय पवार साहेब आदरणीय श्रीमती सुप्रिया सुळे अरुणभाई गुजराती आज च्या सत्कार मूर्ती डॉक्टर सौम्या स्वामीनाथन डॉक्टर माशेलकर श्री हेमंत टकळे सभागृहात उपस्थित सर्व मान्यवर आणि बंधू भगिनींना मगाशी मी जरी म्हटलं की डॉक्टर सौम्या पुण्यात पुण्याच्या आहे असं म्हटलं पण पुण्यात शिकले आहेत पण आता मला थोडंसं त्यात बदल करावं असं वाटतं आणि सुप्रिया तुम्ही जरी 
तुम्हाला मी टोकलो पण मी आता इंग्लिशमध्ये बोलणार आहे कारण आपण जे काही बोलतो ते ज्यांच्यासाठी बोलतो त्यांच्यापर्यंत पोचलं पाहिजे आणि माझी अपेक्षा आहे की इंग्लिश आपल्या सर्वांच्या पर्यंत पोचेलच पण डॉक्टर सौम्य स्वामीनाथन पर्यंत पण पोचेल म्हणून मी याच्या पुढे इंग्लिशमध्ये आपल्या सर्वांच्या संमतीने बोलणार आहे वी असेंबल्ड हिअर ऑन द अकेशन ऑफ हंड्रेड अँड इलेव्हन बर्थ अनिव्हर्सरी ऑफ यशवंतरावजी चव्हाण दिस सेंटर यशवंतराव चव्हाण सेंटर हॅज बीन इन फॅक्ट कॅरिंग आउट कॅरिंग फॉरवर्ड द लेगसी ऑफ चव्हाण साहेब और टू बी करेक्ट आय शुड से दी सोशो कल्चरल लेगसी ऑफ चव्हाण साहेब अँड म्हणजे मराठीत बोलायचं झालं तर महाराष्ट्रीयन माणूस खऱ्या अर्थाने संपूर्ण अर्थाने घडवण्याचं काम हे चव्हाण सेंटर करत आहे आणि तेच खरं चव्हाण सेंटरच्या कार्याचं मला तरी खरं आकर्षण आहे याच कार्यक्रमाचा एक भाग म्हणून चव्हाण सेंटर हॅज अ सिस्टीम ऑफ अवॉर्ड्स ॲट मल्टिपल लेवल्स दी टॉप लेवल इज धिस नॅशनल अवॉर्ड विच चव्हाण सेंटर रिकग्नायझेस अन एमिनंट पर्सनॅलिटी हु हॅज कॉन्ट्रीब्युटेड to national integration democratic values of social and economic development in india i have been fortunate enough to be the chairman of jury of these awards and of course we have a jury which is very very distinguished dr marshal kari sitting here dr narendra jadhav is sitting here vivek savant is sitting here and then there are other members architect ayan kadri former vice chancellor of mumbai university professor swas patnekar and former vice chancellor professor rupa shah so uh, this jury has been tasked to identify the award every year and then we make recommendation uh, to the chawan center the chairman of chawan center shishrat pawar sir and <clears throat> that is announced uh, on 25th of november that's the day center awards the state level award another award but the national award is announced on that day and actual presentation of the award uh, takes place on this day the birth anniversary of sri uh, chandra bichawan and the idea is to recognize contribution of people on various walks of life which have made an impact which have made an impact at the national level and as you will see also at the international level they say that you recognize you know how do you identify a very evolved society and there are many ways of defining that but one thing which i read had made a deep impression on me there are only four major points it says you recognize a society and 
I didn't and figure out how evolved it is based on the institutions it holds, Chavan Center, based on the incentive system it has for high performance, these award based on the infrastructure that society has, that of course is a domain outside, but for government and for the society it's very important. And finally, based on the level of technology that the members of society are able to access and use. So as you can see, Chavan Center is actually making significant contributions in at least two of these four, four pillars. We have been very fortunate to, to have a very distinguished set of people who have been recognized by these awards. Uh, this is happening uh, without any interruption for last several years. And there is actually, if you, the names are written here, absolutely who's who. So I don't have to recount names, but uh, you want to create a list of uh, top level Indians, you just have to read, read that list. So uh, today we have uh, with us Dr. Soumya Swaminathan. Uh, whom will have the good fortune of uh, honoring. Dr. Swaminathan, of course, uh, the citation would be read in full in a short while. But just to highlight some very broad points, she is a pediatrician by training globally recognized for her research in tuberculosis and HIV. She has led important institutions, for example, the National Institute for Research in Tuberculosis and also the Indian Council for Medical Research, of which she has been the Director General and the Department of Medical Research, of which she has been the Secretary to the Government of India. And as we all know, she moved on to the World Health Organization as its Deputy Director General, the second higher position, very soon to be elevated and recognized as the Chief Scientist, the first Chief Scientist of WHO. <laughs> the first didn't exist before, before that. And uh, uh, mind you, that happened before COVID, but that gave tremendous scientific dimension to dealing with COVID. And many of you would have seen her on television appearing for the international body, responding to questions, anxieties. Different countries have different problems dealing with the questions related to that and so on and so forth. A very difficult task which she has done with great distinction in terms of this world, the global fight, global war against COVID. I think to me, an important contribution there in that position has been she promoted the world's largest public domain repository of COVID-19 sequences on uh, GIS AID platform that facilitated genomic epidemiology and real-time surveillance to monitor emergence of new COVID-19 strains across the planet. And it was no, not, first of all, getting people to share their data is tough. Getting that data, evaluating, making sure that things are authentic and putting this on the world platform is tough. Getting the platforms to do that is tough, I don't know. I have done some of these things, so I know what you have 
you have gone through. But I think uh, uh, we used to hear, you know, now this COVID, then there is another form, there is a third form. And for the world to be cope up, uh, to be able to cope up with these challenges, I think this exercise was extremely important, quite apart from, of course, uh, uh, dealing with the uh, availability of vaccines, uh, making recommendations. Uh, two different countries who have different ways of looking at it and it's not just science, it's also the, uh, the perceptions of people which uh, uh, although being scientists it's very difficult to ignore in that position but I think to manage all that is actually makes you I think a holistic scientist. Uh, Another important thing that <coughs> has been said earlier, but I'd like to repeat, is uh, uh, the fact that she is the daughter of uh, a very legendary person, the uh, father of India's Green Revolution, Dr. M. S. Swaminathan, and the M. S. Swaminathan Research Foundation, which has been uh, very active in. Uh, in carrying out grassroots development based on science, particularly in agriculture and livelihood. Uh, the institution has been doing decades of work in a very consistent manner and she is now the chairperson of that foundation and continues uh, her uh, work related to science and development. So we are extremely grateful to you, Dr. Swaminathan, for having accepted uh, this invitation and to be here with us. We just benefited uh, from uh, uh, her lecture and an interactive discussion. Uh, and some of you who were there would have uh, experienced how rich that discussion was. And of course, uh, I'm sure you are going to have another such experience when she takes to this uh, podium. So once again, congratulations to Dr. Swaminathan. Thank you and thanks to all of you. Atas, Dr. Kakadugar and Sanitya Pramane, Ancha Puraskar Vijayta Haya Kodi Saman Nevati Nei, Ka Saman Nei Buddhi Matta Ani Karutru Dvasa Ka Jeevan Ta Udhara Maayet. In 2019, the Jagati Karagya Sangatanin स्वास्थ्य के क्षेत्र में डॉक्टर सौम्य स्वामीनाथन का नाम सबसे पहले आता है स्वास्थ्य देखभाल की उन्नति में उनका योगदान आश्चर्यजनक है स्वास्थ्य क्षेत्र के प्रति डॉक्टर स्वामीनाथन का समर्पण अद्वितीय है क्योंकि स्वास्थ्य सेवा प्रणाली में आने वाली चुनौतियों का समाधान करने में वो महत्वपूर्ण भूमिका निभाती है उन्होंने इस क्षेत्र में अपनी उपलब्धियों ऐसी विश्व स्तर आरोप विशेष छाप छोड़ी उन्होंने विश्व स्वास्थ्य संगठन के मुख्य वैज्ञानिक एवं स्वास्थ्य कार्यक्रमों के पूर्व उप महानिदेशक के रूप में महत्वपूर्ण भूमिका निभाई है उनके नेतृत्व में विश्व स्वास्थ्य संगठन का विज्ञान विभाग अधिक मजबूत हुआ इसके अलावा अनुसंधान मानदंड मानकों की गुणवत्ता और डिजिटल स्वास्थ्य के क्षेत्रों आरोप अधिक ध्यान दिया गया एक और जहां कोरोना महामारी तेजी से फैल रही है वहीं डॉक्टर स्वामीनाथन ने विश्व स्वास्थ्य संगठन के वैज्ञानिकों का समन्वय किया निम्न और मध्यम आय वाले देशों में टीकों का समान वितरण सुनिश्चित करने के लिए कोवैक्स जैसी पहल को बढ़ावा दिया डॉक्टर स्वामीनाथन एक बाल रोग विशेषज्ञ है वो तीन दशकों ऐसी अधिक समय ऐसी क्षय रोग एच के क्षेत्र में शोध कार्य कर रही है उन्होंने भारत सरकार के सचिव और भारतीय चिकित्सा अनुसंधान परिषद के महानिदेशक के रूप में भी कार्य किया है इस अवधि के दौरान उन्होंने भारतीय चिकित्सा विद्यालयों की अनुसंधान क्षमता को बढ़ाया 
सरकार की स्वास्थ्य नीति बनाने में काफी मदद की 2009 से 2011 तक उन्होंने जिनेवा में यूनिसेफ यू विश्व बैंक और विश्व स्वास्थ्य संगठन के विशेष कार्यक्रम के लिए एक अनुसंधान और प्रशिक्षण समन्वय के रूप में काम किया वैश्विक स्वास्थ्य पहल के प्रति उनकी प्रतिबद्धता बार बार स्पष्ट हुई है डॉक्टर सौम्य स्वामीनाथन ने कई किताबें लिखी हैं। ये संख्या करीब साढ़े चार सौ तक जाती है उन्हें यूएस नेशनल अकेडमी ऑफ मेडिसिन यूके अकेडमी ऑफ मेडिकल साइंसेज और सभी भारतीय विज्ञान अकादमी के फेलो के रूप में सम्मानित किया गया है उन्हें कई मानक डॉक्टरेट ऐसी भी सम्मानित किया गया है डॉक्टर स्वामीनाथन कई संगठनों के राष्ट्रीय और वैश्विक सलाहकार हैं। वो स्वीडन में कर्लिस का विश्वविद्यालय और बोस्टन अमेरिका में टफ्स विश्वविद्यालय जैसे प्रतिष्ठित संस्थानों में सहायक प्रोफेसर हैं। उनकी बुद्धिमत्ता प्रबंधन कौशल और विज्ञान के क्षेत्र में नेतृत्व भावी पीढ़ियों के लिए मार्गदर्शन रहेगा उनके स्वस्थ एवं दीर्घायु जीवन के लिए शुभकामनाएं It is my honor to read out the citation for Dr. Soumya Swaminathan. Dr. Soumya Swaminathan, a pediatrician globally recognized for her research on tuberculosis and HIV, is a socio-medical luminary who has the distinction of being the first chief scientist of World Health Organization. <coughs> She has traveled national and international arenas in health research and management with effortless grace and professionalism of the highest order. Born to Dr. M. S. Swaminathan and Mrs. Meena Swaminathan in erstwhile Madras, Dr. Soumya Swaminathan had the proverbial big boots to fill. For her illustrious father is none other than the legendary agronomist and agricultural scientist who has earned the sobriquet "Father of the Green Revolution" in India. She made sure-footed strides in her quest for excellence, earning her MBBS from the hallowed portals of the Armed Forces Medical College, Pune. She followed it up with an MD in pediatrics from the All India Institute of Medical Sciences, New Delhi. She is also a diplomate of National Board from the National Board of Exams. She capped her already envious academic accomplishments with a postdoctoral medical fellowship in neonatology and pediatric pulmonology at the Children's Hospital, Los Angeles, under the aegis of the Keck School of Medicine. In her early days, she was a research fellow in the Department of Pediatric Respiratory Diseases at the University of Leicester in the United Kingdom. Thereafter, she worked as a senior research officer, cardiopulmonary medicine unit, as well as an adjunct associate clinical professor at the Department of Public Health and Family Medicine at Tufts University School of Medicine in Massachusetts. Dr. Swaminathan joined the National Institute for Research in Tuberculosis in 1992 as a coordinator for neglected tropical diseases. She rose to be the director of the NIRT and remained with them till 2013. In the interim period of 2009 to 2011, she was appointed the coordinator of the UNICEF, UNDP, World Bank, WHO special program for research and training in tropical diseases in Geneva. From 2015 to 2017, Dr. Soumya Swaminathan was Director General of the Indian Council of Medical Research (ICMR) and Secretary of the Department of Health Research <coughs> (Ministry of Health and Family Welfare) for the Government of India. From 2017 to 2019, Dr. Soumya Swaminathan was the Deputy Director General of the World Health Organization. In 2019 she was elevated to the position of chief scientist of WHO and played a pivotal role during the COVID-19 pandemic. She was instrumental in urging nations to conduct whole genome sequences of the SARS-CoV-2 virus more frequently and to upload sequences to the GIS aid platform, the world's largest public domain repository of COVID-19 sequences, thus facilitating genomic epidemiology. and real time surveillance to monitor the emergence of new covid-19 viral strains across the planet dr soumya swaminathan's areas of focus are pediatric and adult tuberculosis epidemiology and pathogenesis and the role of nutrition in hiv associated tuberculosis she is one of the pioneers in the use of molecular diagnostics for tb surveillance and care 
She was part of the TB Zero City project, which aimed to create islands of elimination, working with local governments, institutions, and grassroots associations. In 2021, she was also appointed to the Pandemic Preparedness Partnership Group to advise the G7 Presidency. In her journey from a research fellow to the exalted position of the Chief Scientist of the World Health Organization, Dr. Soumya Swaminathan has won myriad accolades in On The Way. She has been conferred the Lifetime Achievement Award by the Indian Association of Applied Microbiologists, the Kshanika Oration Award by the Indian Council of Medical Research, the Dr. K. R. Lahiri Gold Medal for Best Paper at the 11th National Pediatric Pulmonary Conference, the AstraZeneca Research Endowment Award by the National Institute of Pharmaceutical Education and Research, and the Tamil Nadu Science and Technology Award. She is also a fellow of the prestigious Indian Academy of Pediatrics, the National Academy of Sciences India, the Indian National Science Academy, and the Indian Academy of Sciences. She was also elected Foreign Fellow of the U.S. National Academy of Medicine as well as the Academy of Medical Sciences of the U.K. She has a vast body of research papers and publications to her credit. In view of her sterling achievements, Yashwant Rao Tsavan Center is proud to confer the much-coveted Yashwant Rao Tsavan National Award for the year 2023 to Dr. Swami Swaminathan for her yeoman service to medicine in particular and mankind in general, signed by our Honorable President Shri Thank you. Dr. Soumya Swaminathan, Hena Pradhan Karne Sati, Vinanti Karto, Pavar Sahayana. Manapatra, Shal, Dhanadesh, and Sanman Patra, Asaya Puraskara Tasparupay. Ya Varshija Vijayta, Mananiya Dr. Soumya Swaminathan, Yana Yashwatra Saman Rakhye Puraskara Pradhan Karne Diya Tahe. Manap Purva Ka Vinandan. धन्यवाद माननीय डॉक्टर सौम्या स्वामीनाथन यांचं मनोगत ऐकण्यास आपण सगळे उत्सुक आहात मी त्यांना विनंती करतो की त्यांनी आपलं मनोगत व्यक्त करावं डॉक्टर सौम्या यांना विनंती की त्यांनी आपलं मनोगत व्यक्त करावं Namaskar, Honorable Shri Sharad Pawar Ji, Shri Mati Supriya Sule Ji, Shri Arun Gujarati Ji, Dr. Anil Kakotkar, Dr. Mashelkar, members of the board of the foundation and the jury, the CEO Deepti Nakhle of the foundation, ladies and gentlemen, members of the press. Firstly, let me say how honored and humbled and privileged I feel today to be in the same list of these luminaries who have received the Yashwant Rao Chaban Award before me. So thank you so much to the jury and for all of you for considering me worthy of this award. We all know that she Yashwant Rao Chavanji was a towering personality. He was, uh, as were many people of that time during growing up pre-independence pre with a fierce uh, desire to serve the country. And I know that my father and people of his generation, they all had that same burning desire and Many people asked my father why he did not take the IPS. He, he had got the, he uh, wrote the exams because the family wanted him to write the administrative service and he had got into the police service. And uh, he rather opted to take a fellowship in agriculture and go to the Netherlands because he, when he was a young boy, had uh, seen the effects of the Bengal famine 
1941, 42, and the millions of Indians who died because of shortage of food. So he had dedicated his, uh, he wanted to pursue a career where agricultural research and science could solve the problem of uh, food security <coughs> in the country. So I think that generation uh, is was a unique generation and uh, those of us who were lucky to have had the chance, as you said, uh, Madam Supriya, to have either been born into those families or have had the chance to interact with people who were not only intellectual giants, but they served their lives, you know, with a purpose which was well, way beyond uh, individual pride in individual achievements. It was for a greater social and public good. And I think that we have to keep reminding ourselves of people like Jawanji and others who served for the nation and who contributed uh, so much. And uh, an award in the name of somebody like that for the principles for which he stood is really a great uh, honor. When I was young, I always wanted to do research, uh, even though I did not really think about becoming a doctor, uh, perhaps because I grew up in an environment where in the Indian Agricultural Research Institute, there were always uh, students in the house, uh, master students, PhD students, and they were always discussing the work with my father and we would often accompany him to the fields uh, in those days during the Green Revolution time in the 1960s. A lot of experiments were going on in the farmers' fields around uh, in, uh, around Delhi, Haryana, Punjab. And so very often we would go with him, especially on the weekends. And as children we would be playing in the fields while of course he would be having discussion with the farmers on how the new varieties of uh, rice and wheat were, uh, were actually performing. So my mother, uh, on the other hand, was an educationist who was initially a school teacher, but then became very, very passionate and devoted to early childhood care and education. And she was one of the first people, I think, to, um, uh, to talk about the need for the care in the first thousand days of life of a baby, both because the brain is developing at that time and also the physical development and the need to care for both the mother as well as the child, the need for a crash, the need for, uh, in those days there was no Anganwadis and Balwadis as we know them and she was one of the people who, who really championed the need for crashes. She was one of the co-founders of uh, the mobile crashes um, which set up crashes for construction labor and so as children, we also had the chance to go with my mother to construction sites and uh, see the kind of environment in which uh, the construction, especially the women and the children, uh, you know, were uh, spending their days. And the fact that a crash could provide so much, such a safe space for a child, plus provide both nutrition and the stimulation that a young child needs in order for it to develop fully. Um, and even today, I think even 50 years later, we've had the ICDS program since 1972. We still have a problem of young child malnutrition, uh, anemia, and uh, this is a problem that we need to address. Despite the fact that we have food security for many decades in the country, we still do not have nutrition security. So when I, uh, I had an opportunity as a student in class 11 to take up a summer research project, um, I went to the lab of Professor Archana Sharma in Calcutta and I worked, I wanted to work on genetics. Um, the, so she took me to the clinic in the Kolkata Medical College Hospital where I saw a girl of about 16 years old, same age as I was or one year older maybe who had not attained puberty and her parents had brought her for investigations. And so we collected a blood sample from this girl. We went back to the laboratory of uh, Professor Archana Sharma and I was given the task of performing the karyotyping, that is looking at all the chromosomes. As you know, we have human beings, we have 23 pairs of chromosomes and one pair is called the sex chromosome. So in a, in a female, it is XX, you have two X chromosomes. For a, for a male, it is X and Y. 
but everybody has 23 pairs of chromosomes. But this girl had one missing X chromosome. So she had just one X. And it was because of that that she did not have a puberty and she could not, she would not have been able to have children, etc. So uh, for me, this was uh, something as a 15 year old, uh, the power of uh, science to be able to connect something which is happening to a person in the clinic uh, and to be able to understand that problem by doing certain experiments um, made me even more passionate about wanting to take up a career of research. And then I um, ended up doing my MBBS in, in Pune, uh, which I really love as a city. Um, spent my best years, I think, in, in Pune um, and we are still very closely connected with the Armed Forces Medical College and then went on to do uh, pediatrics and, but all along I knew I wanted to do research. So after my training, when I came back to India, I was looking for a position for uh, a doctor who could then do research and I found uh, very little uh, openings or options. And everybody told me that you have to choose. In India, you can be a clinician. Why don't you be a clinician? You're a good clinician. You've done so well in your medical studies. So you can have a very good practice. Or you can go into teaching, join a medical college, and you become a teacher. But nobody opts for a career in research. Um, and it was not considered really you know, a first choice for anybody. So it was quite challenging at that time to really uh, find a slot or a position and uh, I was struggling for some time till I came across the institute in Chennai, the national, uh, it, at that time it was called Tuberculosis Research Center. It's one of the institutes of the ICMR, Indian Council of Medical Research. And I went and Dr. S.P. Tripathi, he had just become the Director General. He happened to be visiting Chennai that day. So I met him and he said, well, we are looking for people like you who are interested in research and you've got very good training, why don't you join us? And there was a special scheme for people coming back from abroad. So that's how I joined the ICMR. And um, even though I was trained as a pediatrician, I decided I would spend my time on tuberculosis. It's a problem in children, but it's also a huge problem in the country. And, uh, and I uh, realized that there were a lot of things we didn't know about TB, and so a lot of research was needed. So that's how in 1992 I started my career there and I very quickly realized that tuberculosis was not only a disease which was caused by a bacterium but it's also a social issue because there were so many stigma and fear around the disease that people, even educated people, does not want to accept that they or anyone in the family has TB, want to keep it a secret. And uh, of course, disproportionately affected the poor uh, who had their own problems of uh, compliance with treatment. It's a very long period of treatment. And, uh, and so the natural human tendency, any of us who take medicines, you know, after a few days when you're feeling better, you, you stop the medicine because you feel that you're, you got cured. Uh, but in TB, you have to continue for six months, sometimes longer if you have drug resistant TB. So it's a real challenge to keep people on treatment. For them, their work is important. They have to earn a livelihood, take care of families. So I also realized then that the social aspects of a disease and the socioeconomic uh, determinants of, of disease are extremely important. I used to go on home visits with our social workers because many times a TB patient would not come back to take their treatment or to come for the regular checkup. And so, we always uh, used to go and meet them in their, in their homes and that was a humbling experience as well because you're sitting in the clinic as a doctor, patients are coming to you, it's very easy to give advice. But when you visit the patient's home and you see how they are living and what is the circumstances in which they are managing their lives, then that really humbles you and you, then you, you stop lecturing your patients. You try to understand, you develop a much better empathy with them. So a lot, most of our TB patients came from very poor backgrounds. So I have visited you know, every uh, slum probably in, in, in Chennai looking for these people and then trying to 
give them counseling and their families and any other support we could give. Sometimes the children used to drop out of school, etc. Very soon after that, of course, we found the first few cases of uh, HIV in India. Uh, this was in 1996. The first six cases were detected among sex workers um, who had been uh, rescued or rehabilitated from, uh, brought back to Tamil Nadu from, uh, um, they were, they had been sex workers and uh, they were detected to be HIV positive and of course then it was a very frightening disease at that time. If you remember, there was no cure, there was nothing you could do and um, it was almost a death, it was a death sentence. And so there was a great deal of fear even among the medical community and the health because when it's like COVID, in the beginning everybody was so frightened because it's something new, um, it can be fatal, you can die from it or it can cause severe illness and you don't know how to prevent it or treat it. So anything like that is always creates a lot of fear and fear creates a lot of stigma and discrimination and we can remember in covid also that there were there was a time when uh, people with covid were really you know kept away and even healthcare workers sometimes uh, were not allowed to even come back to their homes so uh, so fear and stigma is something which gets in the way of uh, treating diseases and for hiv my experience was in those early days when there was no treatment we could treat the other infections because people who get HIV and AIDS, their immunity goes down and very often the first infection they get is tuberculosis. So you would treat the tuberculosis and that would improve and their general condition would improve and they would start feeling much better and eating and they would look like they are putting on weight and recovering but that was very temporary because other, then they would get some other infection and some other infection, some other infection and keep on going downhill. So it's a, it was a very... Uh, difficult time for for the patient and the family of course but also for us as doctors and nurses who took look after these patients it was very depressing because you develop a bond with those people and their families and then you ultimately have to you're feeling very helpless as a pediatrician i took care of a lot of hiv positive children many of them were orphans and there were not many hospitals that were willing to look after these these children through NGOs, through donations, we managed to get antiretroviral treatment. But we have to uh, acknowledge the role that Dr. Yusuf Hamid played in this whole story. If it had not been for him and then for many other Indian generic companies after CIPLA who started producing antiretroviral drugs at a fraction of the cost at what it was being sold in from the companies in the West, we would have lost many, many, many more millions of people, not just in India, but all over the world, particularly in Africa. And from $10,000 a year treatment, and that of course changed everything because today even if somebody has HIV infection or gets HIV infection you can expect to live uh, practically a normal life with the drugs that are now available of course if you have to take them lifelong you cannot stop the medicine but you can have a very good quality of, of life so, so that is the power of, uh, of science um, and, and the kind of research that was done for HIV that uh, on, of course we still don't have a vaccine, but in terms of drugs and in terms of pre other preventive modalities, again mostly using drug combinations, um, <clears throat> we have made such huge progress that uh, that fear of uh, having HIV is no longer there. Today, you know, you have the confidence that uh, you can live uh, a normal life. Uh, still there are uh, issues that are uh, in many places still not all people have got tested, there is still a stigma, there is still um, problems of access to diagnosis and access to treatment 
but um, the same is true for TB. We have good treatment on the prevention side. The, the vaccine we have, BCG, is very old. Uh, it's 100 years old. Unfortunately, we don't really have another better vaccine, so we're still using BCG. But there's a lot of research going on now, and there are several new candidates. And again, with the new technology platforms that were uh, became prominent during COVID, we had never heard of mRNA before that. Uh, but now we have so many mRNA vaccines, including uh, ones made in India. We have a DNA uh, vaccine platform. We have subunit protein vaccines. Uh, and then we have the traditional vaccines where you kill the virus and you inactivate it. So um, those platforms can now be tried for other infectious diseases, including HIV, malaria, tuberculosis, dengue, <coughs> and uh, rare diseases like Nipah virus, Ebola, etc. So I think the progress that we made during pandemic on science and technology now opens up the pot, uh, possibility to use all that knowledge that was gained. And the reason it happened is, firstly, countries invested a lot in science during the pandemic because it was people just wanted to get out of the pandemic. So a huge amount, hundreds of billions of dollars were invested within those two to three years in research. <coughs> Secondly, there was a global mission and a collaboration and a, a, a goal. There was one goal for the whole world. How do we come out of the pandemic? And so there was huge amount of collaboration between countries, scientists, and also between the public and the private sector. <coughs> and then, of course, there was the, uh, the work that was going on across all the different disciplines, and they all came together. Dr. Kapotkar mentioned about genomics. I don't think most people knew what is genomics, what can it do, but certainly during COVID, anybody on the street would tell you what is the latest variant which is circulating and the question is what is the next variant and what is the difference between these variants. People were talking about clinical trials, people were talking about a lot of using a lot of terminologies which normally uh, only experts would be using. So one thing COVID did do I think is to show to people that if you invest in science, you invest in research, you invest in scientists, you invest in institutions then and you invest in data you can learn a lot in a very quick time and you'll be able to find solutions but the investments cannot come after the emergency begins so it was countries that had already invested that actually were able to very quickly build on that and of course india was in a good position we have a lot of scientific institutions we have huge amount of trained manpower 